hope you guys are doing great. I miss you guys so much. I want to give you all a big hug. Um, this quarantine is driving me crazy as well, but there's a lot of good things to it because I've been able to have a deeper relationship with God. I've been able to spend a lot of time with my family, do a lot of chores at the house. And it's just like, let me look at the good side instead of the bad side, you know? So I hope you guys are doing that too. But for the meantime, we're gonna continue with our lessons online through YouTube. And I hope you guys have been watching all the other videos because I know we have plenty of time to watch them now. Um, but before we get into our next lesson, let's bow our head, close our eyes, and say a prayer. Lord God, I just want to thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to speak to anybody that is watching this video, Lord God. I pray that you may be able to use Adrian. I pray that you may be able to use Brittany and myself to minister, Lord God. And that anybody that is watching this video, Lord God, that they you may take away any distraction and that they may be able to focus on what you have for them today, Lord God. Thank you for everything and in your name we pray, amen. Amen, guys. So, in today's story, we're going to be talking about God's protection, God's protection protection over his children. And we chose to do the story of Haman and Mordecai. So during this story, Haman wanted to kill Mordecai, but at that same time, God wanted to promote Mordecai. So it's kind of like Haman versus God. Who do you think wins? I know what you said, God. So. I'm going to read a quick verse just so that you guys can have it in your thought before we go into the story. So it's 1 John 4, 4. It says, but you belong to God, my dear children. Who do we belong to? God. It says, you have already won a victory. Did we lose it? No, we won the victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in this world. So God is greater than anyone out here. And because we have God, because we're his children, we have won the victory. So in this story, like I said, Haman wanted to kill Mordecai. So we have three things that we can learn from this story. One of those is Christians must have faith in God's promise of protection. Okay, we have to have faith in the promise that God has given us in saying that he's going to protect us through anything. Okay, the second one is the promises of God will never fail on his children. If God said he's going to do something, believe it, he's going to make it happen. Okay, and three, pray for grace to trust God in your situation. So we have to pray because if we don't pray, we're not going to have that relationship with God and we're not going to be able to trust him and have faith um, in him. Okay. We're not going to be able to trust that he's going to protect us. We're not going to be able to trust that he's going to take control of anything that we're going through. Okay. So now let's dig deeper into the story and see what actually happens. Hey guys, how are you? I hope you guys are doing well. So like Sammy said, we're going to be talking about three different things today, um, but I'm going to be talking about the first two points, okay? So the first point is Christians must have faith in God's promises of protection. So like Sammy said, we're going to be talking about Haman and Mordecai. And like she said, um, it's about how Haman plotted to kill Mordecai, but how Mordecai wanted or how God wanted to promote Mordecai. And obviously, as she state, as she stated, um, God's plan prevailed over Mordecai's life. And it wasn't, um, it, you know, like she said, God won. So um, Mordecai was promoted, but his enemy, which was Haman, was killed for his evil plan. Um, so I'm going to read um, Esther 6. If you guys want to follow along with me, you guys are more than welcome to. Um, so it goes, that night the king could not sleep, so one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king, and it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresha, two of king's eunuchs, the doorkeepers who had sought to lay hands on king Ahasuerus, sorry guys, 
Then the king said, What honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? And the king's servants who attended him said, Nothing has been done for him. So the king said, Who is the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to suggest that the king hung Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Unfortunately, the game had changed for Haman. Haman naively suggested, then let his robe and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that he may ar that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor, then parade him on the horseback through the city square and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Then the king said to Haman, hurry, take the robe and the horse as you have suggested and do and do so to Mordecai the Jew who sits within the king's gates. Leave nothing undone of all that you have spoken. So that's basically just the story. And that just um, shows how um, God, you know, prevailed in Mordecai's life. How even though there were bad things or there were bad people that wanted to do bad things to Mordecai, God stepped in and was like, it doesn't matter what happens. You know, I made a promise and I promised to protect you and I promised that I was going to do great things in your life and that um and he ended up doing that you know God came through and he protected Mordecai and he promoted him just the same that he said he was going to okay so the second point is the promises of God will never fail on his children so God's protection over his children will not fail regardless of any circumstances that is powerful. Remember, it says regardless of any circumstances, no matter what is going on, the enemies of God's children will be put to shame. They will be ashamed of their evil works and be ridiculed. Meanwhile, God's children will sail on to victory in all circumstances. They will not be ashamed during a confrontation. So that means that whoever stands against you or what evil you think is standing against you, you don't have to worry about it because God is going to take care of that in his own time. So that has nothing to do with us. We don't have to worry about anything or think like, oh, I have to take care of this right now. That has nothing to do with us. God said that he was going to take care of them. Since God's children dwell under divine grace, they will have renewed energy to bring more praises to God's name. Christians have nothing to lose for serving God. They will forever live as overcomers. The scripture assured us if God is for us, who can be against us? And that's Romans 8:31. So that just goes um, to explain that, and that ties into the story because God promised something and he wasn't going to fail on that, you know, it, and he says that he would never fail anyone regardless of it being Mordecai or not. So no matter what circumstance you're in or, you know, the circumstance that we're in today, we just have to remember that God promised that he was going to take care of us. And if, you know, you like in the story have you think you have enemies or you know people that stand against you we don't have to worry about that we have to keep our eyes on our lord and we have to keep focus and god would take care of everything else in his time let's get on to the third point thanks bb all right so guys i have a third point and this is such a good story like imagine someone who you don't you didn't even do anything to they just want to kill you just because they're haters how rude so the third point is pray for grace to trust God in your situation. So we've learned that the promises of God will never fail his children, that Christians must have faith in God's promises and protection. And this last one is to pray for grace. Do you know what grace is? Grace, and it's part of our church name, isn't that nice? Mountain of Grace. But grace is praying for the strength, for the wisdom, for the patience, for us to be able to overcome a trial. So Mordecai, he did this. He went to the queen, he asked for her help, and he trusted that God was gonna get him through this. And you know what, he didn't try to do it himself. He didn't try to get revenge on Haman. He just prayed that God would do his will. And God came through in an amazing way. And in the end, Haman dies, but he dies because he wanted to hurt one of God's child. What, what sorry, one of God's children. So. What we've learned from this story is that no matter what we're going through, no matter who wants to hurt us, no matter what wants, wants to hurt us, coronavirus, we are protected. God is fighting for us at every point, at every turn, guys. So 
Next, we're gonna see a little review video. I want you guys to see it, the animated version. And I love you guys so much. Remember that God is always there. He's our protection. He's the most amazing protector that we can have. He's the most amazing superhero. So have an amazing week, guys. I love you. God bless you. We love you. Everything was going well in the kingdom of Persia. And the people loved the new queen, Esther. Until the second most powerful person after the king called Haman and started creating problems. He enjoyed power and demanded respect from everyone. So he passed an order that all the officials in the kingdom should bow to him whenever he passed by. Everyone followed except Mordecai, the queen's cousin. He refused to bow to Haman even when the other officials challenged him. The officials went to Haman asking him about what should be done to Mordecai. Haman knew that Mordecai was Jew and the only way to get back at him was to kill all the Jews in the entire land. He convinced the king against the Jews. The king allowed Haman to kill all the Jews but he was unaware of the fact that the queen herself was a Jew and that Mordecai and she were related. When Mordecai came to know about Haman's plan, he went to Queen Esther to see. Esther came up with a plan and invited King Xerxes and Haman for a dinner. Haman was extremely pleased to be invited for the Queen's dinner and felt very important, especially when he was invited second time over. But when he was leaving from the dinner, he came across Mordecai who still refused to bow to him. He was extremely angry. His wife and his friends suggested him to build a gallows and hang Mordecai before his second dinner invitation. Haman liked this idea and ordered the gallows to be built. That night, the king couldn't sleep, so he requested the book of history of his kingdom to be read to him. In the book, he read about Mordecai and how he saved the king from a conspiracy against him. Right at that moment, Haman came to seek permission to hang Mordecai on the gallows. But before he could ask his question, the king asked Haman, What honor should be given to a man who truly pleases me? Haman thought the king was talking about him when he was actually talking about Mordecai. Haman suggested that the honored man should wear the king's robe and ride the king's horse through the town. The king liked the idea and said, I will do that for Mordecai. Haman, make sure that happens for me. Haman did everything as per the king's orders, but was not happy about it. The next night, at the dinner, the king asked, My queen! What can I do for you? I will do anything. Queen Esther answered, If you really want to please me, save my life and the lives of my people from the order that has come from your palace to have us all killed. Who would dare pass such an order? The king asked. The queen pointed at Haman. The king was so angry that he decided to have Haman killed in the same gallows which he had built to kill Mordecai. This is how the queen saved Mordecai and all the Jewish people in the kingdom. That was so evil of Haman. Good that his plan backfired. I am happy. Ha <laughs> ha. So today's question is, what was the order that Haman passed? I know. His order was that everyone should bow to him whenever he passed. Well done, Gumbo. Seems like you are paying more attention. Time to go. See y'all soon. Can you do it? My God is a shield. My God is a rock. My God is the man that keeps me on top, on top of the hate, on top of the lies, on top of the devil who's in disguise. My God was chained. My God was bruised. But my heart, he still pursues. I've been broken. I've been lost. But I still take up my cross.